Relaxing. A nice adjective to have attached to anything because it tends to imply something that is enjoyable. However, it is not an adjective I tend to associate with video games for the most part, which makes it all the more special when a game that embodies that trait appears. Yes, I am talking about the game you probably expected and not just from the title of the video. I'm here to talk about one of the most incredible success stories of gaming history, Stardew Valley, and why it absolutely lives up to the hype. Stardew Valley is an amazing tale, even outside of the game, as it was made by one person, Eric Baroni. Baron. Some sort of pronunciation that I couldn't find when I tried to look it up, aka Concerned Ape. He spent five years creating this game, which was originally just a personal project to improve his computer skills. Well, he certainly seemed to improve them over such a long period of time, and the effort and love he put into this game really shined through. He first publicly announced the game in 2012, but it wasn't until February of 2016 that the game released with help from the publisher Chucklefish. You know those moments when a game is delayed or far off and the fans all say they're willing to wait to get a better game. Stardew is probably the best result from that sort of wait I've heard of. The game initially released only on PC, but has since had ports for Mac, Linux, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, and Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure if you could get better console coverage currently, well, unless there was a mobile version but I'm personally okay without one. Stardew's hype was very high prior to the release, and favorable reviews from critics built on that excitement. The result was one of the fastest selling games on the market when it was released, and a game that outsells its competition even now, more than two years after it initially released. Estimates currently place the game at nearly 4 million copies sold. An undeniable success. Stardew Valley is a game where you can live out your dreams of owning a home, having a steady income, escaping from the pressures of modern society, having predictable, consistent seasons, and being faster than everyone around you. It is a farming sim inspired by the Harvest Moon games, and thus has many of the same elements of Harvest Moon, including farming, fishing, foraging, and flirting. You know, the four Fs. In Stardew Valley, there is also an exploration slash mining part to the game. The premise of the game is that you inherited the farm from your late grandfather, who gave it to you as a means to get away from the soul-crushing job you are seen working at in the opening game scene. Your character then proceeds to move to Stardew Valley, specifically Pelican Town. There, you are welcomed by a warm community of people and a rather dilapidated farm that you can improve over time to make into an economic powerhouse! Or just a cozy living, if you play more like me. The main choice that you will make in the game is whether to work with Joja Company, the big box store seeking to develop Pelican Town, or with the spirits in the community center trying to restore it for the people of the town. The first option is easier, but given Joja's not so great practices and reputation, it can make you feel icky working with them. At least, that's how I feel, so I worked with the community center. The grandfather storyline doesn't come up much until the third year of the game when your grandfather's ghost gives you a review of how you've done restoring the farm. In the meantime, though, you are free to do pretty much whatever you want. Generally though, what you can do falls under six categories. The first five are the skills that you can level up over time to get more crafting recipes and the like. Those skills are farming, foraging, mining, fishing, and combat. The sixth part of the game, not contained in the skills, is relationships. Both friendships and eventually romances can be built with the various townspeople in the game. As you build up your skills, new advantages can be chosen, such as increasing the chance of ores being found to being able to sell crops for more. Let's go through each of these categories one by one and show how they can be fun and unique, starting with farming. For farming, this includes growing crops and taking care of animals. 
On the crop front, you need to do the typical farming job, hoeing, planting, and watering to get your crops to grow. There are many crops in the game, and they are seasonally dependent. You cannot grow corn in the spring, and you cannot grow blueberries in the fall. Crops can be given fertilizer, speed grow, or retaining soil to improve results as well. And crops cannot be grown in the winter. Animal care, though, is all year round, so long as you build the correct barn or coop. Starting with chickens and cows, over time you can upgrade the barns and coops to accommodate more animals, such as sheep or rabbits. Diversifying the number of products you can ship out in your handy shipping bin. Over time, additions to the farming aspect are added, including cheese pressing, tree tapping, honey making, and fruit trees. Mining is fairly straightforward. There is a mine that opens up early on in your time in Stardew Valley that you can explore and break rocks in. As you explore, you mine regular rocks, mainly for stone that can be used for building, and sometimes discover coal or geodes in the rocks. Additionally, many gems are around the mines, either hidden in geodes or in their own veins that are easily distinguishable from other rocks. The final thing you can retrieve from mines are copper, iron, and gold, which are used to upgrade tools once they've been smelted into bars in your furnace. The main appeal to me of mining is trying to retrieve all of the items and gems to give to the library slash museum to display. You get rewards after donating certain numbers of items and gems, and Gunther also provides more info about the various gems. Heck, half of the gems I've recovered I've never even heard of before, and I've taken a geology class. Next is foraging. As you're walking around Stardew Valley, you occasionally encounter wild plants that can be collected and sold. These, like the crops, are also seasonally dependent from the daffodils of spring to the frozen yams of winter. You can also forage along the beach for shells, coral, and other goodies. This part of the game is fun, but doesn't ultimately change much over the time of playing. Although there are times when you can grow your own forage plants, which still count as forage instead of farming. I don't know, sometimes the boundaries between farming and foraging are confusing. But foraging also includes getting materials such as wood, hardwood, sap, grass, and the like. These materials are generally used to craft things, or in the case of wood and hardwood, for building and upgrading farm buildings. Fishing, when I started out, was my least favorite part of the gameplay, and honestly, it remains that way. I've just gotten better at it. Once you've gotten your fishing pole from Willy, you can fish in numerous areas around the map. Each type of body of water has different fish, and fishing is not only seasonal dependent like farming and foraging, but is also weather and time dependent. Some fish you can only catch when it's raining, or when it's at night. Like the mining, the appeal to me is simply trying to catch all the fish. For the actual minigame, you need to keep the fish icon in your little green rectangle. For some, that's quite easy. But some fish cause the icon to shoot up and down wildly. And it makes it frustrating at times. Combat comes into play in the mines. As you can see, there are little enemies running or flying around in the mines that try to attack you. You use your various weapons to fend them off so you can keep extracting resources. It's a simple combat system, which is perfectly fine for this game. And the enemies are not too easy. They can actually pose a threat, but nor are they too hard. It's a good balance that prevents the mines from getting tedious. The final aspect of the game, then, is the social aspect. Interacting with the townspeople, which is perhaps my favorite part. The villagers are all, and when I say all, I mean all, vibrant, fun characters that are lovely to interact with, but also surprisingly deep with some serious trauma in their lives. They're complex and lovable, and that makes me want to know more about them. Oh, and you can romance them. Some of them, at least. Which, of course, is a great addition, because who doesn't love a good romance mechanic in a game? You gain hearts through a couple means. The first is simply by talking to them. The second is by giving gifts. Every character has certain gifts they like more than others. And the third 
is by taking on quests. Although these are randomly posted on the bulletin board in town or sent directly to you. Relying on just the quests won't get you very far with the people of the town. As you go up in hearts, you begin to see heart events, which are longer scenes giving greater insight into the character. Some of these scenes are fun, some require you to take part in an activity or answer a question, and some are serious examinations of the character's personal demons. These scenes are perhaps my favorite part of the game. They are simply delightful. There are a lot of things to do in the game, and that means that basically every day in game can be different. A letter in the mail in the morning can change your entire plan for the day, and I like the flexibility of how you play the game. Stardew Valley does not pressure you to play a particular way, which contributes to its very relaxing style of gameplay. As much as I love other games I play, I cannot claim they are relaxing. Stardew is undeniably that way. It's part of the reason many people have spent hundreds of hours tending to their virtual farms in this idyllic valley. The depth of each part of the gameplay combined with easy to pick up mechanics and a tranquil environment surrounding the game all blend themselves into a unique gaming experience you can lose yourself in. I know several people who have played Stardew Valley as a way to reduce their own stress about their lives, and that release of stress is one of the best things video games can offer. The presentation of the game is also top-notch. The details into every sound and every texture in the game is simply astounding. Pixel art is making a comeback, it seems, with the great job done on Stardew Valley and Octopath Traveler. The music is also an essential aspect of the tranquil nature of the game that I described before. The game is a work of art, visually, musically, and as a game. I dispute anyone that claims video games are not art, and I think Stardew Valley is a great example of the artistic importance of video games. The last point I'll mention is the continued support this game has gotten from Concerned Ape. Over the years since Stardew came out, he has put in numerous hours fixing bugs and adding new features in. From new possible marriage partners, which I'm all for because if Emily hadn't been added as a marriage partner, I'm not sure what I would have done, to the newest exciting addition of multiplayer, which to be fair wasn't done directly by Concerned Ape, but he always intended on adding it so it's a win either way. The game keeps getting support from its creator. The support around the game is incredible, with one of the friendliest fan communities I've encountered, a lively modding scene, and a developer and publisher that care about the players. How can you not want to join in? You owe it to yourself to play Stardew Valley. It is a treat to play for anyone, and I do mean anyone. But Rio, I don't like farming sims. You know what? Neither did I. Until Stardew Valley. I'd played farming sim games before and I just got bored quickly. I haven't felt that way with Stardew though. I've completed a year in game and I'm going back for more, probably right after I finish writing this script. There are late game quests and additions that prevent the years from getting monotonous and I'm ready to tackle those. It is a fantastic game that is both accessible and complex that can appeal to all styles of gamers, and it's available on basically every platform. So sit back, boot up your gaming system, and relax into the world of Stardew Valley. I guarantee you, you're in for a treat. Hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Comment below how salty you were on a scale of 1 to 10 that you couldn't dance with anyone at the first spring dance. I was probably at a 7 or 8. And I hope you enjoy Stardew Valley. Have a great day, and happy gaming.